Oh, don't mind me, I'm just putting together my collection of my favorite Mario games. Let's see, we have Galaxy 2, This One Can Go in the Garbage, The Thousand Year Door, Sunshine, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, and Over the Hedge. Okay, one of these things don't belong, and I think it's you. The New Super Mario Brothers series. It isn't that great. If you played one, you pretty much played them all. This is like the game equivalent of white bread. Inoffensive, bland, and high in calories. Now, I'll be completely honest with you. If you were to put these games in a lineup and ask me which gameplay is for which game, well, I'd be screwed. These games, for the most part, just have the worst reputation for being so similar to each other and not really innovating on the last. It's not that they're bad games. Well, okay, they're not that great either. No, in fact, they play pretty well, and they're the very definition of being Okay, but just like life, wouldn't you want more? It's just that there hasn't been any significant change-ups or any growth in all the games since its debut in 2006. Sure, there's a cool level designs in certain games, but as a whole, these games have pretty much remained the same since its first iteration on the DS. The series has always been in sort of the middle of the road, fine games and such, but that's all they really are, just fine games. And there's this aura of missed potential really emitting from this series. And when you take into account that this is Nintendo, a company notorious for pushing the landscape of video games since the 1980s, and they're releasing a game like this, you start to question the meaning of life and why you were even born. Even when compared to other Nintendo series that people claim don't really switch things up or are really repetitive, it always seems like the new Super Mario Brothers series was always stuck in 2006. Unlike other Nintendo series that people claim are just blatant cash grabs, even if they seem repetitive on paper, at least they sometimes manage to try new things. New Super Mario Brothers, on the other hand, uh, it doesn't. I feel like I speak for tons of people when I say that these games, while not bad, are just really repetitive, and the lack of innovation kind of hurts the series as I think these games could be much more than what they are. Which is boring! But I always thought that these games could be fixed, redone entirely from the ground up with new life breathed into them. And as someone that's obsessed with the Mario series to a depressing degree, I think I could come up with a couple of ways how. With the new Super Mario Bros. series debut in 2006, I remember seeing the visuals for the game showcased off in commercials and I thought those looked amazing! back then. The issue with these games now is that from the last 10 years or so, despite being on different hardware altogether, the series has just continued to keep looking the same. It's like growing up, but backwards. If that even makes any sense. If you were to ask me, I think that these games suffer from looking too similar visually. And I think that really stunts the growth of the series, since each game has to squeeze itself into looking like a carbon copy of the last one. Instead of trying an original look, each game just has to look like the DS game but more spruced up. New Super Mario Bros. was intended to be an introduction to newcomers of the Mario series and for familiar fans. The 2D Mario series was pretty much relegated to older consoles, with the last mainline game being Super Mario World, all the way back in 1990 on the Super Nintendo. The original DS game was meant to look like a modern version of the 2D Mario games that everyone came to know and love. I remember even seeing commercials at the time, and they really wanted to highlight how New Super Mario Bros. was the return of 2D Mario, with having him transform from his 8-bit sprite to his new 3D model, really honing in on the fact that this is the rebirth of Mario. But if this is the rebirth, then it might be time to have a baby again because this style is getting old. When you take a look at the original 2D Mario games, each game had its own unique style and approach to its visuals. Not only does it seem like each game was upping each other graphically, but it looks like they took advantage of the hardware that it was on. Super Mario World looked different from Super Mario Bros. 3. All the while, these games just kept on looking the same for the next 10 years, barely changing and stuck in this plasticky looking setting that while nice for maybe the first two games, it got old quick. You can even check out the 3D Mario games, and from game to game, each of them look different than each other. I think it's about time that a new style be used, and there's a ton of different art styles that Nintendo could pick from. Looking at games from the indie landscape, and they're redefining what it means to be a 2D side-scroller in the modern age, and pushing the envelope for visuals. All while Nintendo, the very company that inspired these games, just keep sticking to the same formula. There's even other Nintendo series that try something new with their games too. The Yoshi series is downright beautiful and are chock full of creativity and amazing art style. Yoshi's Woolly World and Crafted World are some of the most beautiful games I've ever played. Kirby has managed to switch things up too from time to time, like with Kirby Epic Yarn. But New Super Mario Bros. has managed to look the same for years and has that lifeless feel to it like it was made entirely by people in suits. Which hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I get it but these games are breaking me. 
emotionally. They all look copy and pasted, same assets, same design, and it's hard to tell the difference between any of the games in the series. And this isn't to say that the games can't reuse stuff from before, the newer Donkey Kong Country games also look awfully similar to each other, but at the same time, Tropical Freeze feels like an evolution from its predecessor. Nowadays, companies are experimenting with visuals and trying new things so that stupid gamers like myself can stop complaining. And if Nintendo's really hung up on keeping things the same, then it might be time to give the series over to a different developer. Grezzo, the folks that remade Link's Awakening, managed to have a masterclass in breathing new life to a game and revisioning the game as something wholly new. Goodfill, the guys behind Yoshi's Woolly World and Crafted World, they're basically like Mozart. Handing the series over to these guys and giving them creative reign to spiff up the visuals, I I think would help this series greatly and stop me from having a mental breakdown of seeing the same visuals over and over and over again. Outside of visuals, I think something else that's really keeping these games back from greatness are the mechanics and gameplay. With the original 2D games, I think Nintendo did as much as they could at the time, but video games have advanced to a whole new level and this jumping and running stuff is not gonna cut it. The 3D mainline games have always introduced a new gimmick for players and I think that's what keeps these games not only timeless but replayable. Galaxy pretty much threw new things at you on every different level. And don't get me started on Sunshine, it has major mood swings. The gimmicks for the new Super Mario Bros. games are usually rehashes of ideas that we've seen done to death or stuff that's not really interesting. Like what if I was Mario, but with the hat? A different hat! These games aren't mechanically doing anything new. They're pretty much gobbing off each other and I don't know if that's cheating. Sure, New Super Mario Bros. 2 had gold Mario, but ask yourself, is that worth spending $40 on? Depending on your answer, you might need to be mentally evaluated. Introducing new add-ons and power-ups, these are fun small things in the game, but they don't really shake things up or bring anything new to the table. Most of the time, these games are just derivatives of the past games and this is pretty much the pattern for the New Super Mario Bros. games. Out of the four main releases so far, well five if you count Super Luigi U, the mechanics have all remained roughly the same. Uh, sure, there's new additions of Nabbit or Yoshi, but this still plays the same as all the other games from before. I think if a new mechanic or gimmick was introduced, similar to the 3D games, the games would just be so much better. I've been looking at a lot of the fan games, and I think that Nintendo could take a big page out of their book. These fan games take concepts from the mainline 3D games and implement them into 2D gameplay, borrowing movesets from the Galaxy games and Sunshine and just outright having Mario move entirely different. Hey, you can say what you want, but this is definitely more original than rinse and repeating the same type of gameplay for the next 10 years. Not to take anything away from the new Super Mario series, these games are fun and can get really hectic with 4 players, but I feel like there's much more that they could be doing. But Nintendo doesn't even have to look at the fan games, cause they can look at their peers too. One of the best side scrolling platformers of the last generation is from the Rayman series. Rayman Legends and Rayman Origins are probably my favorite side scrollers of all time. Playing any of the games, you could never predict what new things a level would throw at you. Just the basic controls of the characters and abilities that they had make these some of the most enjoyable platforming experiences. And this is what New Super Mario Bros. should be. Always trying new things with a totally different art style. But no, we get this. When you get together with some friends, the 4 player mode is fun, but having to play as the Toads well, it leaves me up at night. I always thought that the other two characters should have been Wario or Waluigi. That would have been much cooler than reskin Toads. They could have given Wario or Waluigi an entirely original moveset, but nope, I have to suffer. I think the mainline 3D game shows that it doesn't always have to be the same run and jump gameplay, and you shouldn't be scared to try something new or completely different. And I think this speaks to a larger point about the setting of the games too. Locations play a big role in platformers and it determines what a level can and can't introduce. But for the Mario series, in particular the 2D games, they've been reluctant to try anything new. Yeah, I know, everyone brings up this level and I'm tired of it. For the most part, the 2D games are pretty much stuck in the 80s when it comes to locations. They've just been doing the same thing from the original games. The first area is always a grass area, the next could be sand or snow, and the last area will be themed after fire. This is Side Scroller 101, your standard by the books video game. But is it just me or is anyone else kinda tired of these same locations? All these games take place in the same locations and all start out the same and finish the same. There's no wacky worlds to explore and this plays a big role when it comes to gameplay. It stifles the amount of creative things you could do with movement when it's just a plain regular desert or snow area. Having these copy and paste worlds restricts the game games, as you can't deviate too far from the formula of what people have come to know the Mario series for. But that's the problem, sticking to a formula that's getting old. The world design being repetitive and not pushing boundaries for the series only hurts it more than they think. Also the soundtrack sucks and I get physically ill anytime I hear this type of music. In my opinion, New Super Mario Bros. U is a definitive game in the series, and it's not because I can play as a flying squirrel, but it's the most polished game of the series and tries more new things than the prior games. But that's not saying much when it's 
still the same game as the other three. Both New Super Mario Bros. U and 2 were being developed around the same time, and when you think about it, this is probably why the games feel so similar to each other. While they did try to make 2 a bit more unique than its Wii U counterparts, that didn't really help much because it looks the exact same. And because they were making both games at the same time, it's been said that developers in Nintendo participated in something called a cram school, a way to show tons of developers how to create levels for Mario games. And you can really tell that these games were made in sort of an assembly line order, like a factory. You can't feel that staying power that the Mario games are known for having. They play well, and not every game has to be a masterpiece, but I think when you have a series with a track record like Mario, a series notable for setting the standard of 2D games, seeing these games just get released with not much care put into them, kinda makes you disappointed. These games managed to sell pretty well, let's not underestimate these sales, if any publisher had sales like these, they would be foaming at the mouse. And if I had this type of money in my bank account, I'd be dead. These games have a big audience, and I'm sure there's tons of people that love the games just the way they are and see no problem with them. In fact, that's perfectly fine if they do. If someone sees these games in the same light that I put Super Mario World in, then that's great. Yeah, I still think you should see a therapist, but that's great. And that's what video games are all about. But good lord, am I tired of seeing this style, and I hope for the 2D games to change and get on the right track one day. Well, at this point, I'm just repeating myself, and I think it's time to put these arguments to bed. And Cordroy and his friends lived happily ever after. Well, good night. <laughs>